the Apley Compression and Distraction Test. In this video, we will discuss the Apley Compression and Distraction Test, the psychometrics, when these tests are indicated and contraindicated, and demonstrate how they are performed. But first, let's review some knee anatomy. The Apley tests can be used to examine pathology of the menisci and collateral ligaments. The crescent-shaped medial and lateral menisci are made of fibrocartilage and attached to the superior aspect of the tibial plateaus, lying between the femoral condyles and tibial plateaus in the tibiofemoral joint. The menisci serve various functions, including load transmission, shock absorption, for example, during the stance phase of gait, joint stability by deepening the articulating surfaces of the tibial plateaus, facilitation of knee movement, for example, the menisci will move with the femoral condyles during flexion and extension to maintain joint congruency and prevention of knee hyperextension. Patients with meniscal injuries may report joint line pain, stiffness and swelling in the knee, a pop either heard or felt at the time of injury, and complaints of knee locking or clicking during activity. The medial collateral ligament, also known as the MCL, attaches proximally at the medial femoral epicondyle and distally at the upper medial surface of the tibia. The posterior fibers of this ligament blend with the medial meniscus. The lateral collateral ligament, also known as the LCL, attaches proximally at the lateral femoral epicondyle and distally to the inferior fibular head. Both ligaments help to resist the extremes of knee extension and tibial internal and external rotation with the knee partially flexed. In addition, the MCL and LCL protect against valgus and varus forces to the knee, respectively. Now, let's talk about the tests. For the athlete compression test, the patient is positioned in prone with the knee to be tested flexed to 90 degrees. The physical therapist stabilizes with one hand at the distal femur and provides a compressive force through the calcaneus with the other. Maintaining this compressive force, internally rotate the tibia and note patient symptoms. Release this force. Repeat steps with compressive force through the calcaneus and this time externally rotate the tibia noting patient symptoms. The Apley compression test places a compressive load on the tibial femoral joint. With the addition of tibial internal and external rotation, different aspects of the menisci are stressed and reproduction of meniscal injury symptoms may occur. For the Apley distraction test, the patient is in the same position as the compression test, prone with knee to be tested flexed 90 degrees. The physical therapist gently stabilizes the patient's distal femur with own knee and provides a distractive force using both hands grasped just proximally to the patient's malleoli. Maintaining this distractive force, alternate between internal and external rotation of the tibia and note the patient's symptoms. Compared to the compression test, the Apley distraction test examines the integrity of the collateral ligaments. This test places a distractive and rotational force at the tibiofemoral joint, making the collateral ligaments taut and potentially highlighting their involvement if injured. The Apley distraction test also unloads the menisci and therefore may relieve symptoms if the menisci are involved. If the compression test elicits symptoms such as pain, clicking, or catching, it may indicate a meniscal pathology. If the distraction test elicits symptoms on the medial or lateral side of the knee, it may indicate collateral ligament pathology. Further testing is needed to confirm these results. The psychometrics of the Apley tests are presented in the chart. It is shown to be 41% sensitive for identifying both medial and lateral menisci injuries. It is 93% and 86% specific for identifying medial and lateral menisci injury, respectively. However, this test is not recommended according to the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy Clinical Practice Guidelines. These tests are indicated if the patient report and or mechanism of injury lead the therapist to suspect a meniscal pathology, which may occur as a result of a twisting motion in a weight-bearing position or forced tibial internal or external rotation, injury to the MCL, which may occur with sudden impact to the lateral side of the knee, with the tibia fixed on the ground, forcing the knee into a valgus position, 
or an injury to the LCL, which may occur with a force to the medial side of the knee with the tibia fixed, forcing the knee into a varus position. A contraindication to performing these tests is a tibial or femoral fracture. Now we will demonstrate the Apley tests on a patient. Hi Chia, my name is Cynthia and I'm going to be your therapist today. Um, I hear that you're having some knee problems, um, so clicking, locking, and some pain. Um, so what I'm going to do is two different tests, one called the Apley compression and the other is the Apley distraction. Um, some big terms, but the first one I'm going to demonstrate on the skeleton is uh, the compression one. So you're going to be actually lying down, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to apply some pressure through um, the foot and that pressure is gonna bring these two bones together. Okay, so you have two cushions called the menisci, um, one on either side, um, here in your knee. So when I bring those two bones together, it may recreate the pain that you felt. Um, then I'm also gonna do one that I'm bringing those two bones apart called the distraction. So I'm gonna be pulling at your ankle and you have two ligaments, one on each side of your knee. So when I do that, um, I'm also going to twist and at that point you may feel the symptoms that you felt also and I just want you to tell me how you feel. Okay, any questions for me? Okay. All right, Jay, we already tested um, the right leg, which is the one that you said you were not feeling any pain or any type of symptoms that you were feeling on the left side. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and start by bringing up your leg. I'm going to place my hand the exact same way. So I'm going to hold down on this side and place this other hand at your um, heel. So I'm gonna do the pressing and then twisting, and then I want you to let me know what it is that you feel, okay? Okay, and what did you feel there? Uh, I felt pain and it kind of felt like it was catching. Okay, some pain and some catching. I'm gonna go ahead and twist it into the other direction after I compress it together, okay? What did you feel there? So the same pain and catching. Feeling. Some pain and some catching, okay. Now I'm gonna do the other chest, okay? So I'm gonna place my knee again um, at this part of your leg, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull up by your ankle, and then I'm gonna twist, and you let me know what it is you feel. Okay, so I'm bringing my leg up. How do you feel there? That's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up and twist, and then you let me know. What did you feel there? I didn't really feel anything. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to review the results of the test that we did. So the first set of tests where I did the compression, so I'm going to push down. Um, you said that you did feel the symptoms you felt before, which was the pain and clicking and popping. Um, because of that, it's leading me more towards there being a menisci problem. So the menisci are those cushions in between that knee joint. And uh, the other tests where I pulled up and twisted, you said you didn't feel any symptoms or any of your symptoms, which leads me to think that it's not either of those two ligaments on the side of that knee joint. So now what we're going to do is do some other tests to rule in and or rule out uh, that menisci problem or injury. Okay.